Welcome to Sarnet Television. I'm Stuart, and of course this is the Madhouse, and here at the Madhouse we have Chris. And Chris is going to take apart a Whelan product, otherwise known as the L41AP. Let's take it away, Chris. Thank you, Stuart. Couldn't have said it better myself. Guess I might as well go ahead and get started since it's here in my hands. We have Whelan Engineering's L41 LED beacon. It's a pretty neat little beacon here. It actually reminds me of the 800D series. That was a strobe. It's still available. You still see them in some applications, but really it kind of had this cone shape to the top of it. So the 800 series wasn't quite the same profile. It was actually a little bit taller, but had the same look to it. So if you see some beacons on rigs and you're like, ah, it looks like an L41, but it looks a little bit bigger, probably the 800 series. And that's kind of actually where this new modern day styling came from. As you see, the halogen and strobe leads way to the new innovative LED products, but when it's a good solid classic, sometimes you gotta take some cues from it. So again, hence the shape here. The L41's pretty straightforward. It's class one in its output for amber. It's available in the other safety colors as well. So if you're looking for DOT, fire, law enforcement, it's all available for you. Mounting it, you have a few different options. You can do a flat mount if that's what your application needs. There's holes that are pre-done in the cast aluminum base here versus a polycarbonate. So for flat mount, three tie-in points for screws, bolts, rivets, really any kind of fastening hardware you may have. Or if you'd rather do it on a pull assembly, standard one inch thread is already done into the base. So do up some wiring, put it on the pull assembly, twist it down till it locks in place, and there you have it. So pretty straightforward for cherry pickers or smaller pickup trucks where you're gonna do a pull mount. The, really the fun is inside here. And you can see it's a nice solid polycarbonate dome with optics so you get a great dispersion of light from the diodes inside. That aside, and go ahead, get this off. It's held in place nice and firmly with two screws. With those freed up, go ahead, give it a bit of a wiggle, the dome comes free. You can see it's nice and smooth on the outside here. So with that, you won't have any grime that builds up on it or anything that starts getting trapped in the optic hatching, which happens to be on the inside. So nice and smooth here, rough in here for the optic boost. There's also a seal band, goes around the base bottom here, and when the dome goes back on, it keeps the two locked in place. So really it just kind of helps with a little bit of spacing in here to keep grime, condensation, anything funky from getting in between the two that may get this a little bit dirty. The insides here, you can see it has another optic booster that's actually over the diodes. So what this does is again, takes the diode tower inside here, helps boost its intensity, and that way you have diodes very small that give a big solid output to fill up the whole top. Again, two screws to mount this inner clear optic portion. This comes away. Give you a bit of a neat little look here. Kind of zoom in, see it from this view, and this view here. And you can see it's, even though with it being clear, it's got a really, really nice high polishing to the clear that you can actually see as the light glistens off of it. And also, it kind of looks like a little 2022 dome. And again, really, that's where this styling came from, was the 2022. So it has tighter optics in the top, tighter in the bottom, with a center-based power band, so you get the most intensity dead center, but it's great intensity throughout the whole thing. It's just part of the way the optics go. This is around the diodes. So when they're side by side, the diode fires out into the power band. The optics then help boost it up, boost it down. And with that, here's the goods. Pretty simplistic diode tower mounted in the center here. You can see it consists of four diodes. So pretty simplistic when it comes to the world of wonderful Whelan LED beacons. One on each side, but when they're going and flashing, 
they pump out into the optics, and then you get the hole filled. So rather than having a whole circular section of diodes or a tower that's built with diodes on top of diodes, these small units here do just fine, again, with the optics. So really innovative. You can see the unit is very well put together from the gang at Wheelan. It's fully epoxied inside into the casting here. The diode's nice and soldered on. And in the center, where the diodes are mounted around, the black portion here is part of the cast base and actually acts as a heat sink, again, for the diodes. So the heat that's built up here goes into the center and then spreads down into the whole base. So also what gives it its great longevity. Have the camera zoom in a little bit here just so you can get a better view of the diodes themselves and then also the harness connections that you see all around here. And to the side, you can see the epoxy covers the harness where it goes into the bottom of the unit. So very well put together, very well suited for the outside environment. Well, with the inside look taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead, put this back together. Inside optics, mount onto the base, and the screws will actually go here and here on the clear tabs that the screws fix into. So there we go, part way back together. Take the band, and it's nice and stretchy, so it's easy to get back around the edge here. So that'll line up inside there. Amber dome top. So again, with this being the amber, amber matched to the diodes inside. If it was a red, red diodes inside, red top, and so on through the rest of the color scheme. Get in the dome, screw hole here, screw on the back, goes into the mounts on the base here. So we'll get those lined up and then screw it back together. And when you're putting it together, you just wanna push the dome down a little bit firmly. That way the holes line up and also the seal rubber piece inside gets a nice tight grasp. So there we have it, back together. Now for the fun, well, or the blinding out part. The harness here will tie into a 12 volt system. So you have a black ground, red lead. So go ahead, get those connected. With the unit on and active, you can see, thanks to the booster optics, the whole thing is now filled with nice potent color. 360 degrees worth of solid visibility, so no blind spots, which is great from the tower being only four diodes inside. You have your basic functions that Whelan offers in their LED products. You have a sink, so if you have multiples on a rig, you can tie them together. So simultaneous alternating or simultaneous flashing together. If you wanna go with the high-low function, take the violet trigger wire, apply it to a constant 12 volt source, and it drops the intensity. That way you have your high-low function. So if you don't wanna blind folks too badly, put the violet to power and it drops it down. And so you take it away, back up to full intensity. And if the flash pattern that you see here doesn't quite work for you, you want something a little different for your application, the scan lock wire, which is the white with the violet, momentarily tap it to 12 volts, and it advances the flash pattern. So every time you tap it, it goes to the next, continue on until you found a pattern you like, stop with the momentary on the trigger wire here to 12 volts, and every time you turn the unit off, turn it back on for your use, it'll retain the pattern that it's set to via the chip inside. Oh. 
there you have it. Wheel and Engineering's L41 AP. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me here on Sirenet Television for an inside look. Back to you, Stuart. Well, as you can see here at Sirenet, we try not to take ourselves too serious. But again, it's always nice to get good information, and Chris does a great job. Thanks for watching Sirenet TV.